this one with Ahsoka, uh-huh. uh, I listened to it a year or two ago. I forget when it was. Uh-huh. I forget how long it's been out, but it was on like a vacation trip, and Melly and I listened to it in the car. You listened to uh, Ahsoka. The Ahsoka yeah. in the car, yeah. So it's been a bit since you've you've read this book. Yeah. Um, I've been going through trying to make sure to refresh my memory on everything. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's some things that are still fairly vivid in my mind about it. Um, I have a favorite part that I want to talk about that I'm curious how you took it, because when I went through this book, there was no Tales of the Jedi. There was no contradictions. Mm. Which I figure we'll have to talk about, too, as we kind of go through yeah, a little we will. bit. Because there's Tales of the Jedi uh, has the final episode of that. And it kind of covers like a very super like abridged version of what happens in this book. I feel like yeah, um, like there was I think there's wiggle room where it doesn't necessarily take everything out. Sure, but it kind of the main thing is like the Inquisitor is the main thing that's like if you would have used the same Inquisitor. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, what's the main girl's name? Caden. Caden. Uh, her name is Caden Larty. Yeah. Yeah. Caden. Yep. Uh, actually, I did have a quote from E.K. Johnson that I wanted to read before we got into it, because I'm assuming that continuity stuff will be something that we talk about a lot. Uh, she has a quote here saying, There isn't a big conspiracy behind the changes in Ahsoka's story. Dave approached the book six, uh, approved the book six years ago and then kept working on her journey. It's frustrating to see people gleefully declare my book non-canon instead of just using their imaginations like we did. So what she's saying and kind of like how I felt as I was reading it is like, yeah, I immediately see like, well, Maul wasn't in a racial during the Siege of Mandalore, you know, but I can look at that and be like, well, there's a there's a there's a creative here, an artist here that's telling me this story and I can filter around things that don't necessarily fit together like Legos, you know? Sure. Yeah. No, there's definitely a few I'll changes like that that they kind of talk about. Yeah. But there's also some things that are uh, like referenced in this book that we then see exactly because yeah. I don't. <laughs> I don't remember. I think I might have seen Clone Wars. Man, I don't remember if I if I read this before or after season seven of Clone Wars. I don't remember the uh, release of everything. Yeah. Uh, so. <clears throat> hmm. I think you would have. I think I would have seen, seen seven. The season seven of Clone Wars. Yeah. So, but there's a few things that kind of like contradict each other between yeah. that wasn't out yet with the Siege of Mandalore. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Tales of Jedi wasn't out yet, yeah. so there's like those things yeah. are kind of like, well, this is. I mean, this was this published dead on, and this is a little different. This was published in 2016, and E.K. Johnson even has a quote saying, like, or was at least it's known that she was told, "Don't put too much action into Siege of Mandalore scene," because mm. we're working on it, mm. <laughs> you know. So that was a secret then, but sure, that's why she doesn't really go too far into it. Sure. Yeah. Well, well, I must um, say, oh, go ahead. I would say, well, we should jump in and kind of really discuss this book, I imagine, mm-hmm. here, and then uh, we can get into to some other topics and or questions uh, here afterwards. Absolutely. All right, Aaron. So from a year and a half ago when you read it, um, what was your initial thoughts of, of the book? Of the book? Yeah. Um, I mean, I really liked it. I, I thought some of the fun stuff in the book for me was uh, getting in Ahsoka's mind um, cause you know, we had rebels already, mm-hmm. but like, what were her thoughts after leaving? Um, her, her thinking back on things that had happened and stuff I thought was really cool. Yeah. Um, there was a line I remember from, uh, it's, I think it's early on in the book. She's like recounting like the siege of Mandalore, mm-hmm. like first off is like Darth Maul and stuff. And I think that stuff was really cool. But then later on, she's kind of thinking of like when they're like burying them, burying the, their clones. And yeah. she kind of mentions like they, we, we, we fake Rex's death. Yeah. We leave my, uh, lightsaber my at, there and stuff at Rex's too. grave. Yeah. yeah. And I, and while I think talking about that part, she also is like thinking about younglings and how terrible it must've been for like familiar face to be, how many were killed by a familiar face or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I think it was really cool to have, like that one, that thought there, but also the double thought of like she's thinking of clones. Yeah. But then you can also be like, well, then there's Anakin, mm-hmm. and I was, and she doesn't know that yet. And I just, I like kind of seeing where her mindset is Me as too. she's trying to figure out if she should or shouldn't be helping people. Should she be, like in Kenobi, right? We see Obi Wan spending a lot of time like, keep your head down, don't do anything. Yeah. You're not. You're not. You just just survive. Yeah. Keep an eye on Luke Skywalker. That's it. Um, and then eventually he's kind of summoned and goes out and has to maybe start doing more at some point. I don't, we don't, we don't yeah. know where it goes from there, but you see a growth of him. And, and is able to reinfer- <clears throat> reaffirm his faith in like what he's doing. Whereas Ahsoka yeah. kind of like, at least in this book, you get the feeling that she's kind of, even though she's disenfranchised from the Jedi, she's kept her faith in her training, her mm-hmm. master, 
the mentors, the people that were always there to tell her, well, this is what you should be doing. And now that she doesn't have that, it's something that you, she misses and yeah. she thinks about. And that's what guides her, <laughs> despite the fact that at least one of those people is root and stem, the cause of what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Well, and she keeps talking to like her conscience, her Jiminy Cricket, which yeah. is like a yeah. fake R2-D2, right? Yeah. Like they mentioned about her. Keep, <laughs> like she just like says stuff. And she's uh, like, why do I keep doing this? He's not here, you know? And it's there's that sadness to that element as well. And yeah. uh, I, I just really liked getting into the, the mind of her and how she also didn't just – she doesn't seem to be able to just sit back all the time. Mm-hmm. Like she has to kind of interfere. She has to kind of help. Yeah. And it keeps growing more and more to, to the point where eventually she's like, okay, I'll uh, become fulcrum. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I was like, that's really cool. No, I mean, and you know, <clears throat> we're, we're reviewing this book, like in the middle of the Ahsoka series airing on Disney plus right now. So to me, it was, it's fascinating to think about the differences between Ahsoka's characterization here and much later in her journey. Whereas here, you can still feel that she's she still feels a lot more bright-eyed and optimistic and enjoys actively helping people. And in Ahsoka, uh, the series proper, she just feels very tired. She feels very leaderless in a way, right? Like, mm-hmm. she knows she, she's really good at what she does, but what does she do? Like, I, I do like her discovering what she wants to do at the end of this book, which is that bookend from Padawan Lost to... Fulcrum, right? Sure. Which is a really cool thing for people that are interested, it's like to think of the character's journey or in characterization in this moment. Like, those are very two big uh, goalposts that we can set ourselves in here. But it's yeah. fun to compare that to what we know comes later. Well, yeah. And in this book, too, she also starts to find herself as a leader, which she did so much times, like through the, the Clone Wars. Yeah. But she starts growing a resistance on uh on the planet the farming planet mm-hmm. to the to like yeah all these farmers start joining in with her and she starts leading these people in a, mm-hmm. their, their own little resistance against the empire yeah and you know then later on we start getting her more and more doing more rebellious leading and whatnot mm-hmm. but also sometimes being solo but yeah but she'll she's a, a big part of that and mm-hmm. it, it's i think it's all there from her jedi training and yeah. from her master of like we have to help people and we can't just leave sure. people behind yeah. and we have connections um, I did like that she went back to like check on the uh, the little girl from the the farties. The farties. <laughs> so I'm going to assume you had the same thing happen that happened to me. You listened with Melanie on a road trip. I listened with Jancy on a road trip, mm-hmm. and it's actually kind of funny because Jancy has never seen Clone Wars or Rebels. She hasn't watched Ahsoka. She, I think she's watched the episode of Mandalorian that Ahsoka was in. She's watched all of Star Wars, and you know she's just not as into it, you know, as me, but. You know, sure. who is as into it as me and you sometimes, you know? Yeah, exactly. But it was really interesting. Like, this was kind of her, you know, the first 20 chapters or so we, we read together. And this was kind of her, like, introduction slash uh, getting to know Ahsoka. And I thought it was a really interesting thing. But we listened to the audiobook while driving. A- uh, Ashley Eckstein did a marvelous job. I love that she, na- like, narrated this book. Loved it. And, I mean, there was no way I couldn't hear Ahsoka, right? Sure, yeah. Like, I'm still getting used to Rosario's version. He's much more mature, much more, you know, a sad and somber version. But I still think it, I think it fits, like, at least in the point in which Ahsoka is in her life. But it's really cool to hear Ashley Eckstein take up this character who still hasn't lost a lot of things that make her her. Yeah. You know? I love that. But <laughs> every time she said farty, I thought she said farty. What? You just said the same thing twice. Farty. Yeah, farty. And I kept like, oh, there's the farty girls. <laughs> and me and Chancy. <laughs> no, it's, it's we're driving. <laughs> it definitely sounds funny whenever you're listening to it. And I'm like, wait, what they say? And yeah. like, and then later on, I have to like look it up. I'm uh, like, what are these people's names? Farty. Yeah, farty. Okay. Yeah. No, yes, I get you. It's farty. <clears throat> but I like that she went back to check mm-hmm. on that girl who had like a force sensitivity and stuff too, yeah. right? Like, mm-hmm. it was another youngling that she's thinking of, kind of, and yeah. she knows of. Uh, she knows of a darkness, whatever. Like she's thinking of like this Lord Vader kind yep. of person that she's heard of, and she wants to make sure that he's safe and stuff. But yeah, or that she's safe. But there's uh, two people I want to thank right now. The first one is Samil Battenfeld, who just gifted us uh, uh, five dollars of super chat. Thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, we'll get to your question uh, soon. Uh, the second person I want to thank is Ashley Eckstein for her impression of Darth Maul. Okay. I loved hearing her, <laughs> Lady Tano. You know, like she can't hit the the tone. Yeah, but she hit the inflection. 
She's and like, I, I personally love impressions that have the inflection, but it's not the voice. I think it's a fun thing. She's like, I know how Sam would do yeah. this. Let me try to do like, that. I spent enough time with that guy to know like how he does it, even though it's not my voice. I absolutely love that. <laughs> no, that's fun, too. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll get to your question during the question what? Q&A. Nah, yes, I said Sam. I'm sorry. He's oh. not here right now. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. We'll watch We'll watch Clone Wars again later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or um, you can just watch Ahsoka because he's credited. Which obviously means that he was playing a character that no one knew about, like Merrick or something, right? Uh, it could have. I mean, he could have just been a voice off yeah. over. He could have been a robot. In fact, uh, in a, a rewatch of the first episode, when Ahsoka's down in that temple room and she's like working with the pillars and stuff, you can ju- if you pay attention, you can hear a little bit of Darth Maul from Siege of Mandalore in there. I can't remember what the line is right now, <laughs> but you can hear a little tiny bit of it. Which, you know, Lady Tano, you know? You're just, there's a, that, you're just making that up so everyone goes back and they listen to that over and over. I am find not it. making it up, but uh, I can't remember exactly what the quote is right now off the top of my head. Um, but it was from Siege of Mandalore. Hmm. And gonk, if you, gonk. I know you got to watch. You got to watch the first episode, uh, Gonk. And uh, I'm sure there's other little tiny Easter eggs in there that I haven't found. But anyway, I am curious on uh, one of uh, Gonk. All right, I think I fixed it. <laughs> I am curious on one of uh, your thoughts because you, having seen Tales of the Jedi, yes. Um, whenever I was wa- listening to this, mm-hmm. I got very excited and shocked whenever we switched over to having Bail Organa show up in it, and I wasn't sure what, if you were kind of like expecting it, if it was less of a shock to you, or oh, I wasn't expecting <clears throat> it. Um, but you're saying in contrast to his appearance in Tales of the Jedi. Well, yeah, well, kind of, because, like, I, you know, I hadn't seen that. So, yeah. like, sure, yeah. if you watch that, you know, like, oh, well, he, you know, he talks to her at the mm-hmm. funeral, and then he shows up again at the end, you know? Yeah. And then when we were listening to this, like, it's just, you know, it's Ahsoka and what she's done, and we flash back sometimes to Siege of Mandalore, or she's yeah. thinking about, like, a moment from the Clone Wars. Anakin or, and the Battle of Christophsis. We had a little bit of that. Yeah. We had Obi-Wan on Tatooine. Just yeah. little moments. Yeah, there's little things like that. And then, like, like <clears throat> um, I think... I think this one was before all those even too, mm-hmm. so I wasn't even expecting because of that. Yeah. But like we just cut over, and I'm just like, wait, where are we? Alderaan, yeah, or Organa, yeah. And then I'm talking about this little girl like looking at these fish and stuff, and I was like, oh, it's little Leia. Yeah. And me and Melanie were like, oh, I know, yeah, that and was great. This was also before Kenobi, so like now, like uh, you start trying to yeah. picture like a little Leia, and like, okay, and like now I, I get feel, what you now mean. I feel like it's even saying. more like different and okay. like oh, now I'm really into this here. No, but. that that <clears> makes <throat> sense. That why, why you're asking that question then? Because yeah, as soon as it happened, I'm thinking of the room they're in in Kenobi. You know, just with the fish tank in the corner. Yeah. Breha is walking around, and you know, that little girl that, you know, tricked uh, Breha with her. And oh, that yeah. Thing, maybe be in there. So when I'm, like, imagining it in my mind, I instantly was able to pull that from Kenobi. Whereas when you watched it, it's a complete, oh, my God. Yeah. It's just <laughs> all new stuff. I'm like, oh, okay. my gosh, we're here. Bale's here. You. Why is Bale in Ahsoka? This is great. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, he has little Leia there. He has oh. little Leia. No, that was fantastic. And it served a purpose, too, in uh, – the first scenes take place during the first Empire Day, where mm. Leia and Luke are very young, just mm. born, pretty much. But then that next scene, she's a toddler. And I instantly was able to, like, oh, okay, we, we've skipped some we've time We've had now. time pass. Yeah. Yeah, so it was able to be, uh, you know, a, not an Easter egg, because it's very involved having Bale there. But having that engagement also be utilized in the story to tell you kind of, like, where you are uh, in the timeline. Right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I thought it was really cool. Mm-hmm. I loved, uh, I loved Bale's uh, element of it, because he like, I think he sent Antilles. Is that who he sent? Yeah, I Captain say he, Antilles. I want to say he sent her mm-hmm. or him to go get. He did. Ahsoka. Yeah. Well, I, he didn't know it was Ahsoka. Yet, he sent right? the ship, and then he had two agents that were supposed to uh, abduct her or kidnap her, and that didn't work out very yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. I do like uh, and now having watched Ahsoka and stuff. The mm-hmm. idea of her in like a. Uh, because like she like parks her ship and then comes back, yeah. But like she's like in a space suit or something mm-hmm. like that. Yep. And I was like, yep, same oh, thing. Hey, this is yeah. kind of like uh, like Ahsoka here, uh-huh. you know? Like you can think about that now, but I, yeah. I just like the idea of those kind of like mirroring yeah. each other. Uh, some of my favorite things about the book was uh, effectively a Jedi. I mean, I know she's not a Jedi during this time, but effectively a Jedi uh, going throughout most of these these battles and these scenarios, sans lightsabers. I think was a lot of fun. Uh, it made Ahsoka just have to be a little bit more creative, and uh, and uh, 
obviously it's a way of staying secret. You don't want these big flashy cones of light saying Jedi here, you yeah. know, but I, I just, I like the, where she's like, I'll just, what do I do? I'll just crush this blaster, I guess, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. So it's cool to see uh, that resource come out as well. On the other side of that, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff they do talking about crystals and sabers, yes, and we have is. a little like Ilum memory and stuff that they talk about. Yeah. And, um, we also, and we've talked about this a few times too, about like the idea of bleeding a crystal and about that. Like, I, I feel like every time we talk about like, we talk about it like not being in canon or when has it actually happened in canon mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I think about this sometimes and I'm like, I don't think Eric knows about this one, so I'm not going to say anything. Okay. Yeah. So, but I think, I, I think this is the first time I remember it being like, oh, this is in like the, the current canon now yeah. of having this bleeding of crystals. And I was like, this is cool. I'm glad. Yeah. That- it, it was, it, for me, it was something I just heard about originally online in, in the internet and being like, what? That's weird. But, uh, over time, I've accepted it slash have seen little references, but this one was probably the biggest in terms of bleeding the crystal and then purifying the crystal as yeah. well, which is just so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, because we take, we, we beat the Inquisitor and yeah. use his saber uh-huh. to make new sabers. Okay. Right? So, yes, and that's awesome. I love the idea that something that's been corrupted can can be redeemed mm-hmm. and, and so much in this. And that, and, and that Ahsoka like through a large distance could feel those were hers. Even though they're not, they're this inquisitors and he probably took them from a Jedi that he killed or something. I don't know exactly sure. what happened, well, they but she could somewhere. feel in the ruin of the Jedi and the dark side is salvation, right? So here's where I might bring up just a theory or a little talking point about what we're currently watching the Ahsoka series because at the end of episode four, she turns in the world between worlds and sees Anakin Skywalker. But as it ends, we get this really dark note, this Darth Vader feel, right? Yeah, Vader theme. The Vader theme. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it it's way yeah. more understated than we've heard it uh, in other spots, but it's still there. Um, so there's a part of me going like, if Ahsoka, whose lightsabers that called to her from a great distance were these corrupted crystals that needed uh, purification, I wonder if Anakin Skywalker needs that too, in a way. I wonder if in the world between well, worlds in the episode three Anakin that we see there isn't going to be just, hey, it's Anakin. Let's have a good conversation. Like, what if it's Darth Vader? And what if there's something about that that needs purified in a way, right? Because um, Vader's, Vader's death and his ascension and uh, tran- uh, transition to being a force ghost, like, we don't know anything about that. We just assume everything went great. Even though you say, like, how do you do that? And you have to be like, ah, hey, he's the chosen one. Uh, you just, sure. that, that's just that's in the deal or uh, Yoda and Obi-Wan they did something but what if in a world that is without space and time Ahsoka is the one that helps purify Anakin that allows him to get to something like that hmm and I, I, I was know, the only thinking about that I, just because of the feeling of of something that was bled to be purified again that might be an interesting story thread you go you go I on. mean I would agree that Anakin needs to be purified but I think that that's what Luke does mm-hmm you know, I think that's the idea oh, that sure. like, he's the one who redeems him from the dark side and he at least brings him back to the starts light. him down the, that road. But once yeah. you start down the dark road, forever will dominate your destiny. I don't think it necessarily means like, you know, Luke said like Luke you know, embraced him with love and everything was hunky dory. You know, like maybe there's something else, you know, maybe there's a story to be told there. I don't know. It's just something I was thinking about because I was just so excited by that. I think you just want to bring him up. In the, I do. <laughs> I do. I, mean, I always do. You don't want to bring him, Why would? Yeah. How, how do you not bring up Anakin Skywalker when talking about Ahsoka? Uh, well, you have to. Yeah, I guess so. You do. But that episode just came out this week, Eric. I know. It came out yesterday. I know. About it. I had to talk about it. I know. That's what feel, the people want, Eric. I know. I just feel bad. I feel Why I feel bad? You may not have seen it. We did a spoiler alert. Ha ha. All right. <laughs> But I, I did enjoy having the bleeding crystals and the yeah, talking about all that kind me of too. aspect. Um, and just uh, showing how, because we, especially if we've seen Clone Wars, it's like, well, she doesn't have a saber. And mm-hmm. the Tales of the Jedi also didn't go into that mm-hmm. either. Yeah. Um, so it's like, well, she, she's just made new sabers, I guess, right? Or something. Mm-hmm. But they kind of give you information here as sure. to how yeah. that happens. So I was, I, I like that they did that. Mm-hmm. Especially since I didn't have, uh, I didn't have Tales of the Jedi being like, oh, here, but it, yeah. that's what, and one thing too with that is, Tales of Jedi. I kind of wish they would have just kept the same Inquisitor, rather than changing it. Sure. Unless it's meant to be like kind of a 
different story, but then I feel like it doesn't work because Bale shows up at the end. No, yeah, the Bale thing complicates it a little <sighs> bit, even though I prefer the setting of her being at Padme's funeral. Like in terms of like, oh, I love that. And yeah. I think you can leave that in without it really yeah. kind of contradicting I mean, or causing like, any hiccups in the whole situation. Yeah, like, and like E.K. Johnson said, like use your imagination. You know, like you're not gonna. It's never going to be the case that every Star Wars fan agrees with every other Star Wars fan about what Star Wars is and should be and what the canon is. Like it's all. It's always going to be slightly different. That's not a bad thing. Sure. And if I have to do a little mental gymnastics to make those things fit together, it's super easy. I feel like, but. Uh, yeah, like I will in my head now. I kind of like imagine the substance of the book in the visual language of Tales of the Jedi in a way. Sure. Like you know the eighth, not eighth brother. Which brother? Sixth, sixth brother. Like the sixth brother here, as he's described, the the gray man or the shadow or whatever. Uh, one of our people that help us out with the Nexus. Thank you, Nexus Irish Nexus in the chat. Uh, sent us a picture of what he looked mm-hmm. like, and I remember being like, "It's cool." We know it was really cool. Clancy Brown's <laughs> Inquisitor from Tales of the Jedi. Sure. So I'm kind of like in my head, like imagining that he looks like that a little bit more, you know? Sure. So there, there's a little bit of fudging of the edges there. No, I get that. Um, with that Inquisitor too, I was looking at a, uh, and we may talk about this again uh, next week, but mm-hmm. um, because of this one, I was looking at that again to see kind of what happened in that. And yeah. whenever Ahsoka defeats that Inquisitor, mm-hmm. his like, mask kind of just feels like it just yeah kind of deflates mm-hmm. and stuff and i was like huh and it made me think of like another inquisitor that died that was like kind of so I was yeah like, huh, sure. interesting maybe there's like i don't know because we don't really know anything about that one or what he is or true anything so just I'm that just he's kind of curious. like uh you're talking about the sixth brother like, i'm th- talking about the uh, the other one tales of the jedi tales sixth of the brother. jedi one yeah well i <laughs> mean they both is. kind of s- serve the same purpose in that they seem to be like the first public inquisitor public the first operative inquisitor the grand inquisitor we hear later sure at least for ahsoka in this for book, ahsoka, especially like yeah. it seems like she's aware of like a lord vader type of person yeah she does mention that like there's rumors of a dark lord in the yeah. service of the emperor but i don't think she's aware of like these inquisitors no. at all yeah and i don't know if necessarily the galaxy is either because bale doesn't even know about them he yeah. just like he says at the end of the book he's like so they can't take a Jedi. They're not very dangerous. He's like, oh no, they're dangerous, just for people like you, <laughs> yeah. not people like me. <laughs> yeah, they're they're like a yeah, like a lesser Sith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they're threatening to people who don't have any of the Force, and then they compensate with that big spinny saber. They do, which is one of your favorites. <sighs> it's not terrible. I I mean, and look, if I was a kid. And I went to Walmart and saw that. I'm like, oh, I need this. You know, I'd be playing with it in the woods and everything. I wouldn't care. Like, it's my adult brain that's like, I just don't like it. You know, yeah. I don't like change. <laughs> so I'm not saying uh, if anybody really likes it that I think they're incorrect or anything like that. Hmm. It's mainly just the utilization of the flying. It's but a, also, if they didn't fly with it, it wouldn't be as bad. Is yeah. Like the and then also, thing? someone in chat just mentioned uh, the Revenge of the Sith novelization. And I will always remember the characterization that was given to Dooku in the beginning of that novelization when he's thinking about everything that led to the moment where Palpatine is on the invisible hand and Obi-Wan and Anakin are coming to rescue them. Yeah. And he's thinking about Maul yeah. and how Maul was an animal and he <laughs> used this double-bladed lightsaber. It's very inelegant, yeah. <laughs> you know? And that a true swordsman, a true Sith, a true uh, warrior doesn't need multiple blades, doesn't need these fancy things. You can do this with your wrists and your strength and the force. And I think that I always just really loved that idea. And it's also kind of, uh, it's Does it resonate here with it like resonates. true swordsmen wouldn't need this fancy spinny double saber exactly. thing. Well, no. And we've yeah. always talked about that's like a, it's like a crutch. It's a these. huge crutch, which is why I, every time I see that weapon and I'm seeing it being presented like, oh, that's so cool. In my head, I'm going crutch. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I feel like it's meant to be is intimidation. Intimidation. Right. Yeah. It's like when you see when you see General Grievous walking at you with mm-hmm. two sabers, just oh yeah, you're like oh my gosh, it's scary. Oh what yeah, I, it is. I, I mean, that, and you know? It, you know, obviously like a like a razor blade, but also uh, taking inspiration from like Chinese martial arts with swords, where you know they the sword is constantly in motion. That way, when you are looking at an opponent on the battlefield, you're thinking, oh my god, they could fight ten men, even though they're really just doing katas, or they're just really you know just trying to look intimidating as opposed to what they're actually doing. Uh, so I get it, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, there's a part of me that enjoys Maul's way of doing that and Grievous's way of doing that way more than the Inquisitor's way of doing that, which is just 
But Dooku would look down on all of them. All of them. And Lady Tana. For good reason, because he is one of the best. Like, I feel like... But well, hey, I mean, Palpatine, in the Revenge of the Sith novelization, he looks down on everybody, because he talks about how the Sith... Like, we don't need this stupid toy anymore. Your lightsaber that, by the way, when you stab people, is really easy to not killing people, because it carterizes. It's a weapon of peace. You know, it's... We use this to mock the Jedi. Like, oh, you're really... This really important weapon. This weapon is your life. Look what I can do. I'm Palpatine. I'm better than everybody, and I don't even train, you know? But he talks about how we've grown past this. We don't need this little toy anymore. But the Inquisitor's like, well, I have the toy, and it has special bells and whistles, you know? Yeah. Which is well, still consistent in that I'm sure Palpatine looks down on Inquisitors more than he looks down on Jedi, in a way. I'll say the things that did the most damage to him was lightsabers. Yeah, and did a lot of damage to him. Mace Windu and Rey yeah. <laughs> did a lot of damage to him by having a lightsaber. Yes, I know. <laughs> and those are my two least favorite fights in star wars <laughs> the mace fight i mean at that point the fight itself is kind of done but uh yeah i get you i don't know why palpatine doesn't just stop i'm just trying to it's look like, oh no it's reflecting my lightning back it's like sir stop shooting your lightning i can't <laughs> i think the first time he's just trying to get uh He's trying to get more sympathy from Anakin, and yeah. he's damaging himself. He's That's not what I think about too. It. But George Lucas will come out and say, "No, Mace would have killed him and beat him, and done all that if it if it weren't for Anakin being there." You know? Sure. I mean, maybe it's also the idea that if he would have stopped that, the saber would have just came down on him. So he was keeping mm -hmm. trying to keep that push back. Sure. The Ray one, I think it's not utilized well, but I think that the idea is more than just two sabers pushing it back at him. Mm -hmm. I think it's like this all the Jedi Force kind of power also being pushed back at him. Agre yeah. Um, I just don't think it's, like, visually told well. Yeah. I'm not and I'm not a sequel hater, and I actually quite like to rewatch uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker. I actually think it's one of the better rewatches of a Star Wars movie for me. Um, but, yeah, that, that ending part, I've always been like, eh. You could have done, so, like, so many other things other than the same thing that happened last time, <laughs> in a way, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I get you. <sighs> um... But yeah, back, Inquisitor back to, lightsabers. Back to yeah, back to Ahsoka and mm -hmm. Inquisitor lightsabers and everything. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. You know, it, it was a, a an easy read for me. Yeah, like sometimes we get into these, long. and I, I like n not necessarily even in this length, but sometimes in this like dense context where like especially if I'm mowing the grass or doing something physical while listening to it, there'll be some times where I'm like, crap, I missed the last two sentences, and that was very important. Yep. Whereas this was like. A little more easy. It was a young adult uh, novel. Yeah. Right? A yeah. No, it, yeah, it had like a flow and wasn't as easy to, yeah. oh, what happened? What was this? Mm -hmm. But also, maybe part of that too for me is uh, Ahsoka with Ashley Eckstein doing the voice of it. And I'm just, I don't know. I'm used to hearing that voice a lot too. And yeah. it just kind of kept it going for it me. It did. And that, like, when I was, I've had ones where I, I'm driving and it just doesn't. I'm, I'm, I'm driving and it's like you said, like I got to a point where I'm like, shoot. What they just you're saying? not a sponge. Yeah, you're not a sponge. Ah, dang right it! Yeah. Uh, I was, maybe I was distracted looking at like exits or something like that. Yeah. I'm like, let me go back. <laughs> sure. No, I <laughs> rewind get you. this. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, I think Ashley did a really good job with mm -hmm. it. Um, Especially, and I wanted to give her props. But I mean, I mean, she's a professional. Sometimes when we have young kids in these books, in the vo in the the audio guy it has to do a, a kid's voice, it doesn't sound <clears throat> great. Sure. But Ashley's sound like. She sounds like a child. Well, like sure. she's yeah. so good at it. To be fair, that's her job. Yeah. Right. She's uh, she's an amazing voice actress, and she can get that tone. So like to contrast that when she's going for Darth Maul versus when she's doing the female characters, I feel like we both really enjoy Mark Thompson. Oh yeah. But he doesn't have a whole lot of range in his female uh, character uh, level, right? Whereas I feel like Ashley doesn't have a lot of range in the male ones, but the female characters, especially the younger characters, she had very distinct voices for everybody. Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah, it's the opposite with Mark Thompson is where you have more distinct voices with each of the, the guy characters mm -hmm. typically, and then it's a smaller range he has for the others. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that's the reason why you get, you know, most boys in anime are voiced by women. Yeah, sure. Because if, if they're going to go on for... <laughs> 500 yeah. episodes you exactly. don't you don't want them to this little boy to age now the voice is deeper and now exactly. now you can't play the, the and boy. there's Ash, only a certain you know, amount whoever like a certain amount of time that you can have him working <laughs> and that type of thing yeah so it's difficult but it's one of the reasons i'm super excited by 
watching the new Turtles movie, the Mutant Mayhem, mm, yeah. because all the Turtles are young kids. Mm-hmm. And I only know that because I was watching, I, I've been obsessed with a YouTuber called Harry Mack in the last couple of weeks, who's a freestyle rapper. And he actually went uh, to do like press for the Turtles movie, where they had all those kids, Seth Rogen and fucking Ice Cube there, yeah. and he did a rap for them. And Ice Cube, you know, he's, I, I think Harry Mack is like, the best freestyle rapper I've ever heard in my life. Ice Cube, like all the kids are super excited and they love it and they have these young voices. Ice Cube's like, hey, they don't know. They don't know what you just did, but I know what you just did. I see you. That was amazing, you know? Because, I mean, NWA, right? Uh, he's, anyway, it was a really fun video, but that's why I'm excited for that Ninja Turtles movie. It's, it's, it's actually feels like Because teenagers. of the rapper? Or because no, because the, they feel because like teenagers. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense, I guess. I'm just saying that's the only reason I actually saw it. Because usually I try to stay away from anything that, uh, it's something I'm interested in, but we're going to react to later. Uh, but I had to watch the Harry Mack video. So I was excited to see, man, those kids sound like kids. And I personally haven't had that in a Turtles thing yet. Yeah. Except for pizza. So. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That's the best part. Yeah. I love that part. Um, shoot, I should have wrote down the part I had. I had something I was going to mention. I don't know how you lost it with my on-topic <laughs> conversation. <laughs> you went in Ninja Turtles, and I was like, I don't even remember what it was now. <laughs> I was like, we were talking Turtles. about Ashley, her range, the yeah. young voices. Um, was it before that what you were thinking of? No. I, I, it, um, the uh, Some of the characters in this, too, uh, is what it was about. Uh-huh. Um, one of which was like a Imperial dude, but they have uh, – Oh, yeah. What's his <clears> name? I can't remember right now. Um but like they have him come in at one point, I think too, and I remember there being just this like, uh, like one guy's like really talking crap, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and they come into the bar and like they like execute this guy, uh-huh. and I I remember driving and being like, Jesus, like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> like, yep. And, and it's it's just like the Imperials come in and then they just immediately start changing mm-hmm. everything and yeah. anyone who talks bad or talks against it or whatever, and it. Now it's weird because I I keep relating things to things that I've now seen that I didn't get to like see then, Andor. like Andor or like um, Bad Batch, Bad Batch, or where yeah, yeah, where yeah. they go into that one planet where it's the Separatist lady and she's like, no, I, this is ours, we don't want you here, go yeah. away. And uh, Cody talks the lady down. He's mm-hmm. like, we've both been through war, let's not do this anymore. Yeah, and she lets him go. She doesn't kill this Imperial officer dude, and then immediately it's like, kill her. <laughs> yeah, I was like, damn man, it's just yeah. I, it's just it's hard seeing like the it Imperials is. do everything, and it's like well, I'm glad that Rebels and Resistance rise up and stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But it also makes me think of why like Mon Mothma and uh, Kaz's dad, uh, yeah, Z- Senator Ziono, Z- Ziono, yeah, mm-hmm. like the fear they have of I guess doing how easy it too was. much, like yeah. being like you. It's that thing where it's like, well, people were working for the Imperials. Mm-hmm all the time doing all kinds of stuff right how many of them were actually loyal to the empire versus yeah. how many were just trying to survive sure. and then how do you find those lines to divide that up versus like put all the imperials in jail or do whatever where it's yeah. like we can't trust any of them mm-hmm. and it's 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 tricky because like now once you start doing that you start falling into the same thing the empire did where it's like if you don't agree with us yeah. or if we suspect you at all we'll just toss you in jail or <laughs> kill you or whatever and yeah so like I I get I get a lot of that when you see like the early days of the Empire especially and what they're yeah. doing and even the later days if they don't care. I also you know? I love your point in bringing a bad batch because there was a certain point when I'm listening to this that I was thinking of the stormtrooper in this first year or whatever, and in my head in my head I'm thinking of the the classic stormtrooper that we know of, but no I need to be thinking of that version one stormtrooper we see in bad batch sure i need to be thinking of the shuttles that we see there and the walkers that we see there yeah we're in that middle ground they're still slightly different right so that's a, yeah that's a that's a good point you made. yeah and i think she says early on too about how quickly the clones are replaced with like just yeah. soldiers mm-hmm. just p- people yeah she could tell just by hearing somebody oh that's not a clone yeah yeah mm-hmm. so, i also liked her uh and this is directly kind of tied towards uh Clone Wars season seven, I think too, because it talks about Darth Maul escaping her, but she's like, I had to choose between like Maul and Rex, Uh and I was like, thinking about in episode, well, I guess it would have been the final episode, I think, right, or second to last, Mm -hmm. where he's on that ship and she's trying to hold him back, and then Rex is like covering her and defending her, and then she has to let Maul go and starts defending Rex with sabers, and I'm like. It's just cool to have some of those connections to, to like, yeah, you in, could, in the book of what they're saying. And, like, at that time when they wrote this, I'm, I'm sure E.K. Johnson didn't have those ideas, right? You're, yeah. you're, she's 
they didn't know, right? Mm-hmm. So Ahsoka is, is just, you got to be, I don't know, less specific, but mm-hmm. also enough to generate the emotion and have the understanding as to what Ahsoka's feeling and thinking. Yeah. And I think it does a good enough job for most of those where you can kind of then just fill in from, if, I remember this from Tales, or I remember this from Clone Wars, or I remember yeah. this from that, and you can kind of like piece in some little bits of Despite any contradictions. Yeah. Which, as a mm-hmm. former... Uh, Bible theology student, like I got really good at justifying contradictions, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, and to your point, like the por- part where she has to choose between Rex and Maul and letting him go, it, I would probably put that at the point where she frees him from captivity. Oh, you think it's there more? Yeah, because so? I mean, you know, I need a distraction. What does she do during that distraction? She goes and gets the chip out of Rex's head. And Rex is the one only clone she does that for. So you could say that she was choosing Maul's capture over Rex's freedom in a way, right? Yeah, I guess so. Like, which way do you prioritize yeah. that? I let him go so I can go save Rex. Mm-hmm. I let him go so I can go save Rex. Yeah. Like, both of those yeah. kind of had the same idea there. Yeah, they rhyme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's easy to rhyme when you're the same words, Eric. I suppose so. <laughs> it's not easy to rhyme. Watch a Harry Mack video. He makes it look <sighs> easy. <laughs> uh, what else is there? Yeah, I mean, I those, those, I enjoyed the book for kind of its simplicity, yeah. honestly. It was really just Ahsoka not being able to help that she is a person that will help others. Like, okay. she can't not do that. And I enjoyed that small part of the story kind of going throughout to the point where, like, Bale recognizes that. Even with her not being a Jedi anymore or being affiliated, Bale recognizes, like, you need to help people. That's who you are. Yeah. That's what I need. To the point that she's, like, her cover is that she's just a mechanic that Mm -hmm. fixes stuff for people and everything, right? Mm -hmm. And we kind of saw that even also back in Clone Wars when she was with the the sisters. So, like, that's just what she does. The Martez sisters. Um, That's another one, too, where she was doing – she was a mechanic for the Farties, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, (laughs) there's (sighs) – I forget exactly how it happens, but there's some point like she's like she goes back and she's doing stuff and she has to leave again and the 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 farty dad or whatever yeah, the says, has some kind of element where he's like I I know what you've been doing mm-hmm. or like I know you've been helping people or stealing my ships or whatever yeah. and like he's like not mad but he's like you got to go because you're going to you're going to be getting in trouble and I don't want you getting trouble. He doesn't see stuff. the benefit in stopping what she's doing. Yeah. yeah. Like he kind of like was just letting it happen. Yeah. And I was like, "Well, that's kind of cool." Like Well, they're like a rich local family that also smuggles too, right? Yeah. Like so it's not like he's wanting he, that heat as well. Yeah. But I think that he kind of sees like you can smuggle and still not be what the empire is. Yeah. And I think that she sees like you can steal my ship and not be what the empire is. Yeah. You can do stuff that I don't know what you're doing but I can see that you're doing good. That's not what the Empire does. Yeah, and I just like the rela- relationship between them, even to the point where, like, I think in the very beginning, she's trying to run away on Empire Day, mm-hmm. and when she's flying away, she's like, sorry, farties, you yeah. know, like, it's like thinking to herself, I'm sorry I'm selling your shit. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help, help me just, hear it. I hear it, too. It's the farties. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's like a, it's like one of those, like, sitcom shows, right? Like, meet the farties or something. It is kind of like the farties. Yeah. It's just a weird name. Especially when you only hear it and you're not reading it. I feel if I would have yep. been reading it, I would have probably pronounced it differently and not Yeah, I'm seen too it dumb. I wouldn't have even thought about it yeah. if I was just reading it off the page. Because it's like F A R D I, I think. Yep. Far D. <laughs> Why'd you laugh that time? You even said it the right way. <laughs> I don't know. But no, I, I, I really enjoy this book. Um, mm-hmm. I love Ashley doing the, uh, the reading for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really enjoyed uh, Bale Organa being a part of it. Yeah, and, me and, too. and what you mentioned too, we, there's not much to say about him, but the small little glimpse of like Anakin, uh, like I think he's like watching the shuttle bringing mm-hmm. Ahsoka in. Yeah, um, like that was cool. Having the small little moment with Obi Wan mm-hmm. was really cool. Um, but I, I was really glad to have like Bale be like a bigger chunk of this because. Yeah. I don't. I always want more Bail Organa, Me too. <laughs> and I always feel like he, I'm like, where's Bail? I know. Do like a do a series where it's like have him in Andor, have him like I want Bail Organa doing his rebellion stuff that he's trying to build up and work on. But yeah, I, we never get enough of. Him. I know, but maybe, then, maybe that's part of it too. Is like he's always a smaller part in these things, so it's like I never have too much of him. 
It is one of those weird things with Bail Organa, right? Like, he is significant. Like, that's Leia's father. Like, he is responsible for who Princess Leia, I mean, it, you know, with Bray as well, but responsible for what Princess Leia becomes. Like, yeah. It's not about her blood. It's about the people that raised her, uh, yeah. about her family. And he also has the unfortunate end of dying in the first Star Wars movie, but no one gives this crap. And no one knew. No right? one cares. No one no- <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, when they say that, and you know, like, well, she lost all of her family yeah. and stuff, and... What do we do? Your we father. we console Luke because Obi Wan died. I know, right? <laughs> you know, like yeah. we never. I'm sorry, the guy that you've known for a week died. You know, yeah. So like you but have like seven billion people just died in my family. <laughs> it's 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 a thing where it's just kind of mentioned and then we don't really uh-huh. deal with it at all. But that should have been a bigger deal to her, you know? Like that was her dad. Like as big of a deal. It should have been a bigger deal than Luke being mad about Obi Wan or Darth Vader. Really, <laughs> you know? Like this is the man who be. raised her for. 18 years or whatever. And, I mean, those scenes, and, you know, I've seen some people not love the Obi-Wan series and some of the stuff that they chose to do, but, man, the scenes with Bale, all of them are so good. Jimmy Smith is so good. Yeah. And he just has aged so beautifully that they don't even worry about trying to de-age him or anything. And everybody else is getting, like, de-aged stuff, but Jimmy Smith and Ewan McGregor, ah, they look fine. Yeah. (laughs) Well, the uh, the one thing in this book, too, was uh, he looks at, like, an image and all he sees is like a little bit of like her her montrail. Yeah. And he's like, that's her. That's her. I know her. I know that one. I just love yeah. that so much. I also really love, uh, uh, even though he knows who she is and her connection to Anakin, he will, he does not betray that secret. He's not the one to tell. He's not. It's not his secret to tell. And he thinks about it, but he ultimately doesn't. And I also like his really, uh, he is like a little test on her towards the end of the book where he's like, oh, yeah, you know, something about my daughter. And just kind of, Ahsoka Aww. says like, it sounded like a test, but I must have failed it because he moved on. Yeah. Because <laughs> he doesn't know necessarily who all knows yeah. or anything, right? Mm-hmm. He knows there's Yoda and there's Obi-Wan. Yeah. But like, could she know about this? Like, you know? And there's like this alternate timeline that splits off where I If wa- she knew. Like, I kind of want, like, how amazing would it be if like, Ahsoka was the one guarding, like like how you know Obi Wan is guarding Luke. Maybe Ahsoka's guarding sure, yeah. Leia on Alderaan yeah. while while you, Luke is being raised by Owen and he's being raised by yep. Bail. You also have the Jedi guardians there. That'd yeah, be, that'd you be have the mirror cool of that, but it didn't happen. No, yeah, no, it didn't. Not directly either. But I should say Fulcrum does Im- work with Leia in a way, but I don't think they just like how Vader doesn't. They don't realize the connection. Um, you didn't have any moment with her name did you because there was no tales of the jedi as i mentioned so like whenever mm-hmm. they're like hey ashla i was like oh, ashla ashla yeah oh cool okay mm-hmm. and i thought like that's really cool but that's also her name that she goes by i believe it in is. tales of the jedi yeah. so i figured whenever they said that you're like okay yeah yeah well and <laughs> it goes further than that I, I believe ashla was originally her name when clone wars was first incepted uh i believe so yeah, yeah. which is also a name mm-hmm. for like the light side of the force or whatever yeah. right yeah, it was so, just going to be, here's a Padawan, here's going to be a crew. It was going to be a little more Rebels-like in terms of the crew, Clone Wars was. And then George Lucas is like, why don't you just use an Anakin Obi-Wan? And Dave is like, well, you won't let me, right? He goes, yeah, sure, use him. It's like, okay, but who's, so is just like Obi-Wan's Padawan now? It's like, no, Anakin's. What are, you, what are you talking about? Anakin doesn't have a Padawan. He does. He does now. He does now. And then all the community was like, what's he doing with a Padawan? <laughs> yeah. And now we're like, oh, God, they're meeting. He said snips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. How far it's come between all that. Yep. I just... <laughs> and it'll, it'll always do that. That is the great burden of being a Star Wars fan is eventually when people really don't like something, you just got to wait about a decade and then they will. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't wait until like the the, <laughs> the 20th movie when we're yeah. in our 50s and stuff. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, they got the spinny sabers. I love them. Oh, how they help me fly. He's flying. He's flying. He's flying. He's flying now. <laughs> I'd be, oh, man. I can't, can't wait for that. That'd be great. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. Uh, right. Yeah, fun book. Really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Looking forward to more. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm excited to see with this kind of having a little bit of tie-ins yeah. with like things for Rebels and stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. I'll be excited for a new dawn to see what that covers as well. I saw some people before the show being like, "Oh, they're covering Ahsoka. That was convenient timing." It's like we do think this, this stuff through sometimes. <laughs> no, we try to. Yeah, we try to do that. Yep. But yeah, like we said, the next book is going to be a new dawn, and uh, that might have some stuff to do with uh, Ahsoka in a way. Maybe not as connected. Yeah. As this month's. 